Good afternoon. It's a little chilly. I love it, but I'm gonna put something else on. Bam! Way better. All cozy. All I need now is coffee. Perfect. I scooped up an exciting piece of news today when I was looking at various tech news, and it talked about how Samsung is about to launch Bixby 2.0. Now, I'm a huge proponent, I guess, of Bixby. I'm a very, very much on their side for a multitude of reasons. Number one, you can teach it when it messes up, which is something none, almost none of the other major digital assistants can do. If it doesn't understand something, sorry. Number two, it does have a hard dedicated button, so you can talk to her like you're talking to somebody on a walkie-talkie instead of having to rely on the accuracy or whether or not Bixby will pick up a voice command. You can still use those. By the way, it works best when it's set to high sensitivity, I've discovered recently. As far as voice recognition in general, it's not as good as Google. It might not even be good as Siri. I don't know. I don't have data on that, but I'd like to think that it's better. This new Bixby 2.0 will be forwarded and able to be integrated with Samsung's fridges, everything they make that's smart. Their TVs, the fridges, appliances, even their vacuum cleaners will be able to integrate with Bixby after this is done, which is awesome if I had any other Samsung stuff besides handsets. But the thing about it that I'm excited, wait, the thing I'm excited about the most is finally, <clears throat> so right before Siri launched, Samsung acquired Viv. And what Viv is, it's described by Adam Coopersmith, a partner with Pritzker Group Venture Capital, one of Viv's investors. Viv is designed to be devices, agno <laughs> devices agnostic, which is wonderful. Meaning, think one platform open to all services for all devices personalized for you. Viv's goal is to be ubiquitous so it will understand your preferences and history as you engage with it on your mobile device or in your car or with your smart device at home. So they mean that they're wanting to, to make an independent modularized <clears throat> voice assistant engine, essentially, that can be plugged into an iPhone, plugged into, digitally speaking, plugged into a Samsung or anything, anything that is smart. Now, Siri does have some merits and a large portion of Siri's development team is working on Viv and one of the main guys that helped develop Siri helped develop Bixby. Even though the name, that name is god awful. I hate that name so much. It's, uh, that threw me off. I would call Phoebe over here, but she's sleeping. It says, Viv will be in competition with Microsoft's bot engine and the APIs put out by Facebook to encourage developers to build bots for Messenger. Now, I have never tried a, a bot on Facebook Messenger. I know that as far as Messenger platforms go, in general, bots have become a huge thing, but to be honest, I do not understand them at all. Now I'm getting hot. It's right at that in-between point where you're like, oh, I think I want to wear something heavier, and then 15 minutes later, oh, I don't want to wear something heavier. At today's demo, and this, this article that I'm reading from is another thing I will, again, put in the description, but and it was from last year in May, I think. Today's demo had handled complex queries that sounded a lot like the sort of thing of a lot like the sort of thing Hound is good at. Hound is really cool, and I would use it way more often, except you can't like solidly bake it into your phone's OS. Viv responded to things like, was it raining in Seattle three Thursdays ago? And will it be warmer than 70 degrees near the Golden Gate Bridge after 5 p.m. the day after tomorrow? Warmer than 70 degrees. Warmer than 70 degrees. So it's not just warmer. It says, will it be a higher temperature than the temperature that I'm about to dictate to you there's a 70 degrees, there's number two. Near, there's number three, it's a location-based thing, the Golden Gate Bridge. So there's another thing that they'll have to search for after there's a, what is it, preposition, right? 5 p.m., another specified time, the day after, another preposition, tomorrow. So there's five, six, seven, okay. <laughs> there's eight different parameters inside that request, and it just, <laughs> done. Like, whoa, what the f that? Awesome, and I cannot wait until you combine those capabilities with Bixby because even if she still doesn't get something right You can still correct her on a word-per-word -word basis. You can set up 
multiple action commands that can be triggered with a word or phrase that you pick. So for example, when I go to bed, I turn on the blue light filter on the phone, I also turn down the brightness to two, and then I also set an alarm for 9 a.m., I turn Bluetooth off, and I turn the phone on vibrate. Instead of having to go tickety tack, tappity tap, swipey swipe, I can just say this. Good night. Done. The blue light filter is on now. Right. I changed sound mode to vibrate. Okay, it's off. Done. I've set an alarm for 9 o'clock a.m. Okay, I set it to 5. All set. Yeah, whoops, out of focus. Same thing applies to when I get up in the morning. We turn blue light filter off, we turn the brightness back up to 50%, we turn Bluetooth back on, and we turn vibrate off. Like you saw, it may take a little bit for it to execute all those, but you get up, you're like, uh, coffee, good morning. And then we go okay, about our day it's off. Uh, while the phone is taking okay, care of stuff the in the background while we brush our teeth or get our clothes on. Or Done. Pee. Bluetooth is on. Done. It's now at 50. All set. Show me what other assistant can do that. I'm not saying they don't exist, but the major ones can't do that. That's freaking awesome. And when paired with Viv, if it does everything that it said it did. Oh yeah, something else that I wanted to add. Another part of the article says, on stage it showed off what it claims is a breakthrough dynamic program generation. With every verbal request, Viv dynamically spit out code showing off how it understood and handled the request. They would, that would hypothetically allow developers to build out a robust conversational UI for their services simply by speaking to Viv and tweaking the code she generates in return. So if she writes her own code. Now, I'm not a coder, so that could be something that every digital assistant writes or does. But still, and then as you use her or as the developers use her, they'll just analyze the code that gets output and then tweak it. And it can work on multiple operating systems ubiquitously. Come on. Like Bixby is going to slay. It already slays in some departments. Other departments, it falls short, but Bixby's gonna slay. So that's what I'm stokeified about. But why don't y'all stay beaming?